Assalamu alaikum, it's Vivian Shwaikani. I'll be explaining chapter 10, Aldehydes and Ketones, part 2, which is the last part in this chapter. Actually, in this uh, part, there are, we have to specify the characteristics and conditions of the following reaction. I will not list them, we will list it in the video. Let's start with the first reaction, which is the catalytic hydrogenation of carbonyl compounds. Let's start with aldehydes first. The hydrogenation of an aldehyde produces a primary alcohol. Simply, an aldehyde, when adding to it a molecule of hydrogen in the presence of a catalyst, which is, can be, for example, nickel or platinum, and upon heating, a primary alcohol is obtained. This is why it's said catalytic dehydrogenation, because we need a catalyst. Now, here is the aldehyde here the hydrogen when it is added so a primary alcohol as you can see where OH is attached to a carbon that bears only one alkyl group is obtained actually in alcohol lesson we saw the opposite of this reaction in alcohol lesson we saw that the catalytic dehydrogenation of a primary alcohol produces aldehyde so this reaction is the opposite of the catalytic dehydrogenation of the primary alcohol this is an example. Can you see here is the carbonyl group of an aldehyde plus hydrogen. Look here, I will obtain a primary alcohol. Now, the catalytic hydrogenation of carbonyl group for ketones, also ketones undergo catalytic hydrogenation, but they produce a secondary alcohol. So, as I said, ketone plus hydrogen, a secondary alcohol is produced always using the same catalyst. Here is using the, general, the uh, structural formula. Here is the ketone and plus H2, a secondary alcohol. Look here, we have two carbonyl group. Sorry, we have two alkyl group attached to this carbon. Here also, this reaction is the opposite of the catalytic dehydrogenation of a secondary alcohol. This is an example. Here is the carbonyl group of a ketone look it turns here to become what a secondary alcohol so this is about the catalytic hydrogenation now let's move to a second reaction which is the reaction with sodium bisulfite which is NaHSO3 this reaction is also for both aldehydes and ketones what is the aim of this reaction the usage of sodium bisulfite, which is NaHSO3, is to detect the presence of carbonyl group in a compound. This fact is based on, sorry, this property or is based on the fact that a sodium bisulfite solution is colorless. It reacts with a carbonyl group and a white crystal will appear, which indicates that the result is positive. Look here. Here is the negative result. It means this is the sodium bisulfite solution, which is colorless, as mentioned there. In the presence of any an aldehyde or a ketone, they react with this solution, producing a positive test. And can you see here the crystals appear? So aldehydes and ketones can be detected by using the sodium bisulfite. But using this test, we cannot distinguish between aldehydes and ketones because, as we said, sodium bisulfite detects the presence of a carbonyl group but doesn't distinguish between aldehydes and ketones. So this is the reaction, the second reaction in this lesson, which is about sodium bisulfite. The third reaction of aldehydes and ketones together is the reaction with 2,4-dinitrophenyl hydrazine, known as DNPH. Now, you're not responsible uh, for memorizing this name. It's enough to memorize DNPH. What is the aim of using this test? Or the aim of DNPH test, the same as the usage of sodium bisulfite, is to detect the presence of carbonyl group in a compound. A DNPH solution is actually yellow-orange. It's a solution, so it's a clear. DNPH reacts with carbonyl group and a yellow-orange precipitate appears, and this is why we said in this case the positive, the result is positive. Look here. Here is a ketone, 
and you can see how there is a precipitate which has the orange color and here is an aldehyde or what do i care about is this also the result is positive and this is dnph when it's negative it means when no reaction with carbonyl group obtained so as you can see in all cases we have the uh, yellow color but here the solution is clear while here we have a precipitate so aldehydes and ketones can be detected using the nph test but using this test we cannot distinguish between aldehydes and ketones so in conclusion for both aldehydes and ketones both undergo hydrogenation reactions where aldehydes produce primary alcohol <coughs> while ketones produce secondary alcohol also also both aldehydes and ketones give white crystals with sodium bisulfide and ahso3 and both aldehydes and ketones give yellow-orange precipitate with 2,4 dn pH. The question now is how to distinguish between aldehydes and ketones. Actually, we can distinguish between these two carbonylated compounds based on the following fact. Aldehyde undergoes oxidation, which is a mild oxidation, with a strong oxidizing agents, while ketones don't. This fact helps us distinguishing between these two carbonylated compounds. Now, what are the strong oxidizing agents used to identify aldehydes from ketones since aldehydes react with them? We have Tolens reagents, it's a new word, or it's called ammonical silver nitrate solution. We can use Fehling's test, we can use Schiff's reagent, and we can use potassium dichromate and potassium permanganate keep in mind that both aldehydes and ketones are colorless because in these tests we will be based on the change in color to detect the presence of aldehyde let's start with the first one which is tolens reagent ammonical silver nitrate ammonical silver nitrate is colorless when added to an aldehyde we have a silver mirror deposit that appears look here as we said, when Tolens reagent, which is the ammonical silver nitrate, is added to a carbonyl compound and a silver metal deposit is obtained, automatically this carbonyl compound is an aldehyde. Look here. Can you see how it's clear initially? And look at the mirror deposit that appear once again clear and then silver mirror deposit appear. Now, ketones, when added with, a tolen, with, with tolens reagent, there will be no reaction and it will stay colorless. The second test used to <clears throat> distinguish alcohol from ketone is the failing solution. Failing solution is actually blue. When it is added to aldehyde and upon heating, a brick red precipitate is appear. Look here. When Fehling's reagent is added to an aldehyde, as I said above, after heating the mixture, a brick red precipitate appears. This is the color of Fehling's solution. Now, when added to an aldehyde, look here, and look, a red brick red precipitate will appear. While, upon adding ketone to Fehling's solution and upon heating, no reaction will occur, the result is said to be negative and the color is st stays blue. So, in failing tests, always keep in mind that we need to heat for the precipitate to appear. And you have to mention this if in the exam we will ask, we will be asked to describe this test. After failing solution, we have Schiff reagent. Schiff reagent is also colorless. When added to an aldehyde, a pink color will be obtained. So, when Schiff reagent is added to an aldehyde, after cooling the mixture, a pink color appears. Shift reagent that is colorless, when added to a ketone, the color will stay colorless. Note, Shift's test is performed by placing the test tube in ice water. Also, this piece of information, you have to mention it when you are asked to describe this test. Then, we have the oxidation of aldehydes using potassium dichromate solution in acidic medium. Potassium dichromate, you know, we have repeated a lot this equation or the properties of this compound, so I will just write the equation. This is for Cr2O7 that turns into Cr3+, and this is that of an aldehyde that turns into carboxylic acid when reacting when, with Cr2O7. So here is multiplied by 3, so we will obtain the following, and the overall reaction will be the following. 
So I will ask you to do a pause and to copy it because it's repeated a lot. Now, what do we care about here that the change in color? So potassium dichromate, which has yellow color, when added to an aldehyde, it turns to be green due to the formation of CR3 plus ions that we studied previously. You can look here. This is the potassium dichromate. And if potassium dichromate solution is added to an aldehyde, as we said, the green color is obtained. Why? If it's added to a ketone, the color stays yellow and the test is said to be negative. Look, this is the result obtained when aldehyde is added to it. And this is for ketone. Again, about now, a potassium permanganate, which is KMnO4. Here also, it's repeated a lot. This is MnO4 minus that will uh, give Mn2 plus, and we have to multiply it by 2. And this is uh, the aldehyde that becomes carboxylic acid. And this is the overall reaction. Also here, I will ask you to do a pause to copy those equations. But what do I care about is the observation. So, as we said, aldehyde plus potassium permanganate having a purple or a violet color turns to be colorless due to the presence of Mn2 plus ions. If potassium permanganate solution is added to an aldehyde, a purple color disappears. Uh, sorry, here it disappears because colorless. While if ketone is added here to this, a purple color appears. So, look here. Here, the aldehyde, it will become colorless with a ketone it will stay purple finally this is a concept map that summarizes all tests studied here here is an organic compound we performed first sodium bisulfate test or dnph if the test is negative simply we said that is not carbonated and we have to look at other tests to identify it if the test is positive it means it's a carbonyl compound but it can be either aldehyde or ketone to distinguish between them it means to identify whether we have here an aldehyde or ketone we can perform one of the following tests failing reagent shift reagent potassium tolens potassium permanganate okay if with any of these we obtain the positive test automatically we will say that it's an aldehyde if the test is negative with that we said that it's a ketone now here is an application the molecular formula of a compound c contains the three carbon atoms the following tests were performed to identify c the results of the tests are described here in the table or are mentioned in the table First, you have to interpret the results of the table. Second, you have to identify the compound C. Then you have to write the condensed structural formula of the isomer of C. And four, you have to describe another test to identify the isomer of C. I will ask you to do a pause and to solve it on a scratch paper. And here is the solution. Thanks for watching. Just pay attention to what you have to do in this video and see you in another